everyone, it's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. It's that time again. It's time to start another puzzle mystery quilt, this time for the fall of 2022. We're going to be starting the puzzle mystery quilt called Piazza. I'm super excited for this one. And before we get started, let's learn a little bit of history of Italy and what a piazza is. Ah, uh, Italy. Best known for the Roman Colosseum, Galileo, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Pope, the Sistine Chapel, Leonardo da Vinci, Milan Fashion Week, and so much more. Italy is rich in history, and the history of its more than 130 piazzas are no exception. A piazza is a public square or marketplace. For this puzzle mystery quilt, I will be completing the San Marco colorway. Little did I know when I chose my colorway that I had been to the San Marco Piazza. In 2003, I had the opportunity to visit Venice, Italy and saw it in person. In fact, you might have seen this piazza and not even known it. At one end is the St. Mark's Basilica, which in its current form was completed in 1071 CE, but the history of this building dates back to 829 CE. Just a few feet from the doors of the St. Mark's Basilica stands the St. Mark's Campanile Tower. Originally built as a watchtower, it also houses the bells for St. Mark's Basilica. The tower you see today isn't the first tower that's been built here. Though the date of when the first tower was built is unknown, it's estimated around the early 10th century. This tower suffered many catastrophes such as fires and has also had many modifications done to it. In 1902, the tower collapsed and it took 10 years to finish rebuilding it. Getting back to the piazza, it was built around 819 CE, but has undergone many changes over many eras. Currently, there's an effort to save this piazza from the flooding that threatens all of Venice. Also located in this piazza is the St. Mark's clock, which I feel is the inspiration for this colorway. The clock features a zodiac dial along with relative positions of the sun, earth, and moon. All right, that's enough of a history lesson for today. Let's get started putting together clue number one of Piazza. All right, I have collected everything for my Piazza clue number one. Remember, I'm gonna be working on the large quilt for clue number one. However, since I am an ambassador for Cotton Cuts, I do have the instructions for both the large and the small. So if you ever have questions for either size, feel free to reach out to any of the ambassadors because we do have the instructions for both large and small. Inside your first clue should be your colorway guide and I'm going to be doing San Marco so I have of course have the San Marco uh, colorway uh, guide here and inside of here make sure to hold on to this You're, if you've never done a puzzle mystery quilt before you definitely want to hold on to this and make sure to keep it handy the best idea that I have for you is to go ahead and take a picture of the information inside um, there's a lot of great information inside of this little booklet to tell you how this is going to go if you have not done a puzzle mystery quilt before. Uh, over here in the orange area, you have your puzzle mystery quilt shipping dates. This one will ship on the last Friday, so Piazza will ship on the last Friday of the month. And if you're currently doing So Sweet, that will ship on the first Friday of every month. So these are the dates for all your clues. We also have just tips and tricks. Read over these and read all the different tips and tricks for putting together your quilt. And of course, if you have something that is not exactly right, it's very rare for it to happen, but sometimes cotton cuts uh, does accidentally leave out a piece of material or they give you the wrong type of material or something can happen. It's very rare, but I have seen it happen. And when it does, you can contact Cotton Cuts and they will take care of it immediately. They are super fast in responding and getting your issue re resolved as quickly as possible. So definitely uh, let them know if there's any kind of problem with your clues. And then on the back here, we have our uh, color guide for the different fabrics, so A through F, and then it also shows the binding fabric on here as well. So if you and if you happen to look on here, you'll notice that I have two of the same on my color wheel. That's because the six o'clock position most of the time on these are going to be your binding fabric. So these are the colors that I'm using, or these are the fabrics that I'm going to be using for 
the uh, San Marco, um, which is all uh, uh, Allison glass fabric. Sorry, I was trying to read and talk at the same time and that didn't quite work. Couple things that are not exactly listed in this guide. If you, I, I see a lot of questions, especially with new people coming on board um, about measuring because the instructions do give you a size that the clues are supposed to come out to. I don't measure my clues unless I see something is way off, then I don't measure my clues and I don't worry about the sizing because in the end, all of my quilts have come out great. So don't freak out if your clues don't exactly line up with the measurements that are listed on the instructions. Don't freak out about that. It happens and my quilts have always come out correct. Uh, the best thing and the best advice I have for you is consistency. So stick with whatever seam allowance you're using, whether it be a scant quarter of an inch or a quarter of an inch, whatever you're using, just stick with that during the course of this and you're gonna do just fine. It's gonna be perfectly fine. I do have to do a little bit of finagling in the end to get all of my clues put together, but just like with any quilt, that happens when you put a quilt together because you're dealing with material and it shifts and it moves and nothing is ever perfect. Remember, I always like to say this in my videos, a completed quilt top is always, always better than a, and than a perfect one. So finish the quilt top, don't go for perfection, go for finished. Okay, I think I covered everything. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always leave them down in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Okay, I think that's it. We're gonna go ahead and move on to opening up our first clue packet um, and seeing what fabric is included in clue packet one. Before we get started, there is a little goodie in our packet. Um, everybody usually gets something a little bit different. It just depends. So I got some awesome pins from Cotton Cuts. I love the Cotton Cuts pins. They're really nice and they're fun colors too. So I got some pins. I love that Cotton Cuts throws in little goodies, usually on the first package around the middle. So around clue five and then usually the last one. So clue 10 usually has little goodies in it, which is super awesome. So I'm gonna put these away with my other pins and we'll check out the fabric. All right, let's take a look at the fabric included in clue number one. I'm looking at my camera to make sure I get everything in frame. It looks like we have 20 A triangles. We have 20 B triangles. We have four D triangles. We have another four triangles, but this time of fabric E. I have eight squares of A fabric. I have four squares of C fabric. I also have a very long rectangle and there are four of them. So I have four uh, long skinny rectangles of fabric E. Well, it looks as if I have some bonus fabric included in my package, I went and checked really quick to look on the Cotton Cuts blog because on the Cotton Cuts blog, for the first clue, they included some extra fabric, but this is not that extra fabric. Um, go check out the Cotton Cuts blog. I'll put a link to it down in the description below, but um, it looks like this fabric is just some bonus fabric and I'm gonna reach out to them. Remember, there's that email address for you to reach out to them. I'm gonna go ahead and use that email address and just quickly check with them and um, find out um, this isn't for clue one, but it may end up being for another clue. So I'm gonna hold on to it and let them know that I received some bonus fabric and see if it's intended for another clue later down the road or if it just was some bonus fabric that they ended up including. I'm gonna set it off to the side for now and we'll continue on with clue number one. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the table next to me and we'll start off with step number one. All right, starting off with section 1A, remember that all of our seam allowances, it says it up here at the very top, but um, just in case you are new to the Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilts, we're gonna be using a quarter of an inch seam and press in the direction of the arrows. So it doesn't tell you in the instructions how to press, it shows you with an arrow indicating which direction. All right, 
We're going to be creating section 1A, and it says we'll be making four of section 1A. The instructions tell you how to make all four sections at the same time. So we're not going to be repeating the instructions. We're going to be doing the same thing the, all the way through to make all four. All right, step number one, it says, so a triangle of D to a triangle of E. We're going to be making half square triangles with these fabrics, and we're going to make four of them in total. And when we're finished, we're going to be pressing towards our D fabric. I love this D fabric. I think I like my F fabric a little bit more, but we don't have any F fabric in this clue, at least for the large, but I love this D fabric. It's I think it's so cool. All right, so we're going to just put our half square triangles together just like this. We're gonna make four of them in total. I'm gonna to come back here and turn the camera back on when it's time to press everything out. Okay, I've sewn all four of those together and for those who are new to half square triangles, I'm gonna show you the easiest way that I like to press out my half square triangles and hopefully not warp them whenever I'm pressing them out. What I like to do is we're going to be pressing towards our D fabric. So my D fabric is on top and I'm opening it up towards my D fabric. And what I do is I start down here at the bottom and I push upwards and then I come back down and then I go straight over to the left and then just finish pressing that out. And usually I find that helps to keep the warping to a minimum. So um, that's how I like to do that. So I have now pressed all of step number one. Let's move on to step number two. Okay, moving on to step number two, it says to sew an A square to the left of step one. So we're just gonna make them just like this. So this is my A square, D and E. And we're gonna make four of these in total. Now my colorway San Marco for fabric A is almost a tone on tone. It is very, very, there's a pattern to it and it is very, very light. Um, so if you have San Marco as well, make sure you're using the correct side of the fabric. Um, so pay very close attention to that. But um, that's what it's gonna look like when we finish. We're gonna sew four of these and we're gonna press it towards our A fabric when it's all said and done with. I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and sew four of these and I'll come back when it's time to press it out. All right, I have sewn all four of those together. I am now pressing out my fabric towards my A square. So just like that. And I now have four of those all ready to go. We're going to go ahead and now move on to step number three. All right, moving on to step number three, it says to sew a C square to the left of an A square. And we're gonna make four of these in total and we're gonna press it towards our A fabric when it's all said and done with. So we're just gonna put them together like this. I love my fabric in this colorway. It is so gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this four times and I'll come back when it's time to press these out. All right, we have sewn all of those together. I'm pressing towards my A fabric like the instructions are saying to do so. I press towards my A fabric and now we are finished with that. I did want to point out really quickly, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up all that great. I know it's not going to pick it up on the white all that great, but if you notice here in my colorway, my fabric C has it's not exactly directional fabric. There are pictures in the um, uh, in the tone on tone look. Um, and basically, you never know which way the puzzle mystery quilt is going to come out. And you can try as hard as you want to, um, if you have a pattern or an image in your print to get everything so that it's right side up whenever the quilt is done. That's nearly impossible with the puzzle mystery quilt. And so what I tend to do is I tend to randomize my designs. So here on this top one, what I've done is I've taken the pattern and I'm making it go vertically and then my white, the pattern in my white fabric is actually going horizontally and then I reversed it. So this time on the blue fabric, my C fabric, my image is going horizontally and then on my A fabric, my image is going vertically because honestly, when you back out from this quilt, you're not really going to be able to see the pictures that are in the fabric. And so I just tend to randomize mine and know that I, that kind of helps with making sure that things don't end up, I don't know how to explain this, but basically it helps kind of break everything up. So when the final quilt comes together, I don't have a whole bunch of one pieces going one way in one section and then everything else is randomized. It just, to me, 
typically works out better if I randomize it while I'm putting these pieces together. That's my personal preference. You create your quilt however you want to, but that's a tip that I use when I put mine together. All right, we're done with step three. Let's move on to step four. Okay, moving on to step four, it says to join step three to the top of a step two. We're gonna make four of these in total and we'll be done with section 1A whenever we finish this. So we're just going to put these together just like this. Your center point right here is where you can nest your seams. Um, so that way uh, it works out nicely. And so this is gonna be my focal point for landing. And you're noticing probably a little bit that it doesn't quite line up on the edges. That's perfectly fine. I'm more concerned with this point here in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all four of these together with uh, keeping in mind that the center point is the most important thing to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together and I'll come back when it's time to press it all out. All right, I have sewn all four of those together. We're gonna be pressing towards our CA square. So towards the top of this block and it should look something like this when you're all said and done with. So there is my section 1A. I tend to put clue 1A whenever I'm writing my notes to myself. Um, and what I do is I have these Avery labels. These are color-coded labels from Avery. 6721 is the number for them. Um, and these are great for labeling the blocks um, and keeping everything organized. Um, but that's how I do it. Some people will just take pieces of paper and pin them to it. It doesn't really matter, but we're gonna go ahead and label this as either section 1A or clue 1A. All right, moving on to section 1B. It says you'll be making four of section 1B. The instructions below tell you how to make all four sections at the same time. Uh, this is gonna take a while, but first one, for step number one, it says to sew a triangle A to a triangle of B, and we're gonna make 20 of these in total. Now, whenever I take these over to the sewing machine, I did this also on the step one for section 1A. Um, we have to be careful as we're sewing these together because this is a, we don't wanna stretch out the bias whenever we're putting our two clues together or our pieces together. So whenever I'm sewing on this line right here, I wanna make sure that I am letting the machine do all the work. I don't wanna pull or stretch on the end as I'm letting it go through the machine. So so I'm there mostly just to help push the material through and let the, or I'm not even really pushing. The machine is pushing the material through. I'm just guiding it, making sure that it's going through on that quarter inch seam. So as you make all 20 of these, just make sure that you are not um, stretching out that bias of the fabric and um, that, that can get you into a little bit of trouble. I bet you when we come back for step number two, I bet you're gonna see that I probably ended up doing that, but that's perfectly fine. It'll end up great. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew 20 of these. All right, it took me a hot second to sew all 20 of those together, but I have completed that. We're now pressing out towards our B fabric. So I'm just pressing up and over on all 20 of these half square triangles. There we go. And now we have 20 of those and we're ready to move on to step number two. Okay, moving on to step number two, it says to sew five step one units in a row and we're gonna make four of these. So I'm gonna line up five of my step one units and they're kind of overlapping my um, pressing pad a little bit here, but you get the idea of what we're going for. We're gonna make sure that our B is down pointing to the left and our A is pointing up to our right. And we're gonna sew five of these squares together just like this and we're gonna do it four times. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll come back when it's time to press all five out or all four, all four of them out. All right, I have sewn all four of those together. My machine fought me a little bit, so it took me longer than it should have to get that done, but I officially have sewn all four of those strips together. And as I predicted, they're a little wobbly. Um, they're not perfectly lined up straight, but that's okay. Again, remember we're going for a finished quilt top, not a perfect quilt top. At least that's what I always tell myself. All right, so there's all four of those. This last one's actually pretty well 
even, and I'm pretty happy about that. All right, let's move on to step number three. All right, moving on to step number three, it says to join a rectangle of E to step two, matching up the ends. So we're just gonna add on our bottom E rectangle here to the bottom of what we just did in step number two. We're gonna make four of those, and I'll come back when it's time to press all of this out. Okay, I have sewn everything together and now it's time to press it out. We're gonna be pressing towards our E fabric. So I'm just going to quickly press it like so. I really should probably use my regular sized iron. This mini iron is great um, for the smaller pieces, but when it gets to the bigger pieces, it gets a little harder. All right, so there we go. That's what we should have when we're all said and done. We have four of our section 1B or clue 1B that looks like this and we're done. All right, once again, here is our section 1A and our section 1B. I, I am going to label them as such and put these away along with my color guide. Again, make sure to take pictures of this using your phone so that way if you ever get separated from your color guide, you'll be able to uh, know which color is which. I'm going to put all of this into a storage container and we'll be ready for next month's clue, clue number two.